on, everybody? It is IBB James, and I am here with a friend of mine, Kyle, aka KJ, aka IBB KJ, aka the coolest dude on the planet. Um, but uh, anyway, he has been so kind as to join us for his hashtag IBB Top Three Trilogy. Trilogy. That's right. So this is part one. So you have to come back tomorrow, see part two, come back two days from now and see part three, because what's more fun than a trilogy? Nothing, yeah, really. Yeah, I, I don't think anything, yeah. really. Um, so, Kyle, if you could please just kind of just say a little bit about yourself, um, you know, what you do now, and then we'll dive right into your first key to success. Uh, well, I am currently a site selector at the Austin Company. I started that role in... February this year. Uh, so it's essentially what I do is when companies uh, need a location for a new facility or um, are expanding a current facility, um, I one of the things I do is I go out and view the land, um, look at lots of different sites, different aspects, utilities, um, ingress, egress of roadways, uh, things of that nature. I like it. Mm -hmm. So basically, we're like, hey, we're t we want to take the IBB universe somewhere else. You'd be like, well, it's got to be here based on, you know, based on our requirements or our goals or based on our uh, clientele or what, what. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. So he's been so kind as to when we were talking about with our Golay County golf outing and our push to help, you know, promote manufacturing and all that. Um, you know, you, you brought out some really, really cool details and points and, and, uh, um, so it, you amazed me with what, like, I was expecting, like, here's a few pointers, you know, good luck. Mm -hmm. And like, you brought this whole thing, just like breaking down to like the nth degree of why certain things are important, why other things aren't. So well, I was very, very impressed. Yeah. So. I remember specifically talking about, um, Workforce and you know the intricacies of that um, in different industries, especially manufacturing and kind of struggles that that goes with. So mm -hmm. um, there's just so much out there, uh, especially now with um, lots of different facets of you know employment being so low, but uh, labor force participation being low as well, which um, is you know. Another topic for okay, okay, hold on. Thing. All right. Well, if you want to know some really cool stuff, reach out to this guy. He's one of the smartest guys I know. So, um, so without further ado, man, let's dive right into number one key to success. Sounds good. What is it? It is education. Um, ah. So the old edu. Yeah. So for me, education is more than just going to college. It's more than just job training. Both play. Um, an aspect into that, but um, I remember in our initial conversation, um, one thing that stuck out to you was um, I said, you know, I went to undergrad to get an education and grad school to get a job. So, boom. I love that. All right. So yeah. That, that. So I did, I got all my education at Ohio State or the Ohio State, as they say. Um, <laughs> and um, I don't want to set, upset anybody. It was a lot of humanities and a lot of economics and lots of diverse um, classes that I took. And having that diversity of classes helped me learn to think. Um, and what I mean by that is problem solve. So, you know, you can't just necessarily go out into the job market just with job training. Um, you know, whether it's a welder or, you know, financial analyst or whatever it is. Um, it's helpful to have a lot of those other classes because they help you think through from yeah. different perspectives. Yeah, because there, there's what the, the textbook says, everything should go this way, and if it doesn't, everything should be fixed by going that way, yeah. and then you find yourself in real life yeah. that you go that way, doesn't work, and then you go that way, and it doesn't work, yeah. and then it's like, okay, well, these are the two ways I was told to go. But it's like you can't just quit. You have to yeah. actually, at least, yeah. think, problem solve. Um, well, I, yeah. I, and I want to build on that a little bit too. Yeah. And it's, um, it's not. It it didn't just stop. It didn't start before college, and it doesn't stop after college. It's something yes. that I continually look at 
And you know, it's not only within my specific job category or industry. Mm-hmm. Like I read all kinds of different stuff. Like I okay. like to read about like farming and soil and things like that. And hashtag uh, soil. <laughs> yeah, okay. I right. mean, <laughs> you know, so. Um, I read just a variety of different things, and um, it's so important to my life, and it's yeah. something that has made, that I firmly believe has made me really successful. Awesome. And, and, and too, like, you feel like education, when you educate yourself, it it gives you that satisfaction and that feeling of wanting to educate yourself more. Like, it, like it's a compounding effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Very cool. Um, so, pro problem solving problem solving is there one tip you could give everybody out there about like hey this you know because obviously a lot of what you do is hey here's an here's an issue and there's all these different at you know, soil no. you know I'll, I'm not even gonna begin to like just pretend that I know all the different things <laughs> you know what I'm saying but yeah. like is there something that you how do you kind of like is there a saying that you help helps remind you to focus on the right things or is there kind of a code that you use um when you're approaching a a very complex problem and you just have to really scale it in and say this is i need to focus on the simple concept of just solve it so um Maybe not entirely where you're going, but um, Sorry. when a decision comes into play for me, like I always um, have had the benefit to be very thoughtful. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is before I make any kind of decision or impulse or something like that, one of the things I do is I think stop. There's a moment there, and if you can allow yourself um, an action to say stop and then it gives you another moment to think. Um, mm. So whether that be through Stop. a conference call in business partners or something like that, you know, always allow yourself a little bit of time to think. And having that rather mm-hmm. than just kind of shooting from the hip all the time, um, yeah. and allow yourself a little pause to think um, through other scenarios or what have you. Oh, stop. No. That's good, and that's where, again, a lot of... A lot of wonderful, amazing things have come from me always saying, go. <laughs> and, but no, I, that's where I get myself into trouble. And Erica will be the first one to tell you. My brothers will be the first one to tell you. It's like, yeah, you should have said stop on this yeah. one. But, you know, so, um, yeah, no, I think that's because, you know, in the heat of the moment, especially, too, you got, you know, all kinds of people want you. Just get the job done. You're like, well... There's more to it than that, you know? yeah. but like, um, I love that just, so everybody stop. I felt good. I felt good. So just stop. Are you sure it felt good? It. <laughs> it took a little work. It took a little work, but I was. <laughs> so very cool. So, so constantly educate yourself and stop mm-hmm. and use that education to solve problems and to uh, make next moves and and do really cool stuff to be yep. successful. So, is there anything else that you would add to the education piece? Um, I think that about covers it. Um, there's some other yeah, aspects I want to talk about, but we'll do that then. Ooh, in the trilogy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All snap. So anyway, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it for part one of the trilogy. Until next time. Stay burned. <laughs>